That's everything her way, and she was sharing everything personable, uh, personal about her. And now you got to take that, and you got to figure out what it is with you. And all the things I'm sharing with you, this is everything that works for me. And you're going to take some of it, and some of it you're going to be like, that doesn't sound like a good thing to say. And that's fine, but you're going to figure out the way that you're going to say it that's going to make a difference in your business. So navigating the invite process from beginning to end. I'm going to talk fast. No, I'm probably going to be out of breath because I'm pregnant. <laughs> all right, so common inviting fears that we all have. It doesn't matter what rank you are in this room if you're a new coach or if you're a superstar coach. You don't want to be a salesperson. You don't want to chase people, and you don't want to feel icky. And if you ever feel that way when you're making a post or when you're inviting someone, then you're not doing it the right way. If you're doing it the right way, you're never going to feel any of those things, and those fears are actually a waste of energy. So inviting becomes easier when your storefront has been opened. And so that might not make a lot of sense, but let's say that there's a coffee shop that opens up. Maybe, you don't even know, maybe it is a coffee shop. You don't know because they never put a sign outside. They never tell you what's inside. They don't put any sort of pictures or anything. You have no idea what's going on in there, but you walk by there and you see that something's going on, but not enough to pique your interest to go in and ever actually check. If you're not telling people that you're now a coach and this is why and you're excited and sharing your feelings, then they don't even know what the heck you're doing. And they're not even gonna care what you're posting about. They don't care because you don't even have a sign on your window. They don't know what you have to offer. So you have to open your storefront, as scary as it is. If you don't, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you might as well stop. You have to share your own journey. You have to be proof that the products work not proof you use the products. Yes. They have to work. Yes. If they're not working, people are going to watch you forever, but if you're not getting results consistently over time, it doesn't matter. You have to be proof that they're working, and you have to share that journey. You have to be a raving yes. fan. You have to love everything. You, I know why I love coaching. I know why I love Shakeology. I know why I love the workout programs. If you don't know that today, your homework, if you can take anything from today, is to go home and figure out why the heck are you doing this? Why are you a raving fan? Because if you're not, there's no way you're going to attract other raving fans. And as a coach, that's what you want. You want a team of fans that are going to go after it and build a huge downline. So you have to be a raving fan. I may need my water in a minute. Speaking pregnant is hard. Um, <laughs> Um, you have to be consistently sharing what you have coming up so people can join and you have to always have something to invite to. If you're inviting to one challenge group and it, it starts and you have nothing for an entire month, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You have to have more to invite to. What can you do? What can you offer? They need to know what's coming up. And you also need to make sure that it's about them. It's a solution that you have to offer. It's about them. It's absolutely not about you and it's not about the sale. And if it is, then you need to go check yourself. You need to get yourself in the right mindset before you talk to another person because it needs to be about them. As a coach, it's important to remember that we offer solutions. We're not selling programs. We're not selling Shakeology. We are offering solutions to people that need this. We're saving lives. We're not getting people drunk on wine. Sorry. But we're not. We're saving people's lives. And you have to know that you have something to offer, and that is not something to be scared to share. When you can help someone with their diabetes, when you can help someone with their blood pressure, when you can help someone play with their grandkid again, that's something that you should be proud to share. You have to know why it's specifically good for them and why you're offering it. You're the one asking the questions, because if you're the one talking, you're done. If they're asking all the questions and you're just talking, you're done. You need to be asking the questions because the more you know about them, the closer you are. I don't want to say to the sale or to the close, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not about you, what you have to offer, what your story is. The minute it's about them in that conversation, you don't need to talk about you anymore. It's all about them. So this is where we're going to get long-winded. This is the many ways to invite. Okay, There are a ton of ways that invites can happen. And I'm not going to read them. I'm going to give you some generalizations. You guys are going to get all these slides, every single one of them, okay? So don't worry about that. And there's a 
Uh, Christina was like, this is your brain on paper and I can't handle it. <laughs> but, because it's a lot, and I'm an emerald, so I'm like, do, 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 do. Okay, so these kind of go together. There's the two dif- these two different ways. First of all, someone approaches you. My aunt lost 20 pounds in the 21 day fix, and I want to do it. Okay, well, when you're a new coach, the first thing we do is, all right, great, here's our link, right? And what happens? They fall off. Who knows if they even do it? You don't know. Because you didn't actually treat that as an invite. But it is. They came to you, but you're still inviting them. And you need to know about them. So it's important to gain a lifer, like Megan was talking about. You need to consult no matter what. Who cares how they came to you? The consultation now has to start. It also, through conversation, your one-on-one conversations that you're having with people, eventually are going to go into an invite. And when they do, it has to be about them. What is their motive for even being interested? That's great that your aunt, I was gonna use Sally when I practiced too. Um, That's great that your aunt lost 20 pounds on the 21 day fix. But what's your motive for doing this? Oh, I actually just wanna tone, I don't wanna lose any weight. Oh, okay. Um, And what are your specific goals? What do you like, what do you dislike? You have to know, otherwise you guys are selling them a product. You're not selling them a solution. You're not giving them something to work with. So with those, you have to treat them um, just as a fresh invite. You have to take it to the beginning. Call to action posts are another way. I love that Megan already set me up for this. If you're using stock photos, you need to throw them in the garbage because they are not going to work. It does scream, buy this. Okay, so call to action posts are another way to get invites. And most of my invites come from call to action posts. I have about one to two a week, leading up to what I have going on that next week. So I constantly have people I'm talking to and inviting because you're gonna do things that, this food may not look extremely appetizing, but it looks really easy. And for someone that's never meal prepped in their life and they're scared to make this difference, they're looking at that going, all right, I can cut up a cucumber. (laughs) I can put hummus in there, you know? And all of a sudden it's not so bad. Maybe it's not so hard. This other post is just me. Yes, it's a call to action to something, but I'm just showing that I'm happy and I'm doing this and I'm gonna keep doing it. And it does matter what it says, but the picture matters first because if they're not gonna stop on the picture, they'd probably stop on that because of my gun. But uh, (laughs) that's why I really picked that picture. I was like, my arm looks good in that. Um, But they have to stop at the picture, otherwise they're not even gonna read it. A couple other examples. These are for business call to action posts. I worked this business because I cried every day on the way to work because my son has separation anxiety to this day and he cried and I had to leave with snot and tears all over me and I bawled my eyes out to then go pretend that I was happy to do every freaking person's hair that I didn't want to touch and then I cried almost all the way home. I couldn't wait to get home. And that's what fueled me to do this. And I'm kind of, I always hold this tiger because he's what makes me strong enough to do this. That's my, that, he's my strength. Not even me. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be up here. And so for me, I made this post one day at lunch when I was sitting there, and this was my work time. And he's playing with his sharks at the table, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my lunch hour at work. He's playing with his sharks. People need to hear this right now. Was it the most opportune time to post a call to action? No, it was in the middle of the day. But it was the most opportune time for me to share my heart. And sometimes that's more important. Usually, Sunday to Thursday at 8 p.m. is the time you want to post a call to action. But that that day, that worked really well because how many other moms can relate to that? How many other moms want that to be their day? The other one would appeal to the mom that maybe already stays at home, but she dreams for something a little bigger. She wants to stay home and continue, but she wants to have some purpose too. She doesn't want to just change diapers and have snot all over her, right? So this appeals to that person that says, listen, you can do this too. And it grabs their attention. Of course, transformations always grab attention. And then um, the other post is just an example of one that's a little bit longer, where I kind of go right away into the objections I'm expecting to hear. And I'm already feel felt founding through those before I even talk to these people. So how do you get invites from those? Call to actions, any person who likes they're getting invited, but in a way that's not bad, in a way that it's okay, because I'm sharing from my heart. All I simply do is thank them. Thank you for liking that, that was hard to post. 
Sometimes that's hard to share. I really appreciate that you liked it. Um, and then let them know, are you interested in joining or were you just giving me support? Either way, I appreciate it a lot. I hope you're having a good day. I never get silence from that. I need to take a drink. I never get silence from that. Because I'm speaking from my heart. Thank you. That was really nice. Are you interested? And often I say, are just giving me a pat on my back. Nine out of ten times they're giving me a pat on the back. But do you know how much our relationship just got closer? How much more ready, when they are ready, who they're going to think of to reach out to? And then call to action inquiries. The once in a while that someone does reach out and say, I saw your call to action, I want to join. And they're not going to call it a call to action. But um, you're basically going to go back to the beginning. Find out their motive. Find out why they want to join. Be excited. Ask them about their specific goals. And immediately remember that it's not about your post. So, yep, it drew people in. But now your post is done because now it's about a human being on the other side of your message. And there's a reason that they need you. A couple other ways, cold market invite and as a new coach. These are similar for me. I never cold invite. I will never tell you to have five, Shauna, I will never tell you to do three, three invites a day. I will never tell anybody to do a certain amount because if you're forcing them to me, you're selling. It's just, for me, there are some coaches who are very successful with that, that's not me. A cold invite to me would be someone who I see working out or I see posting clean eating but I've noticed they're not, in, I know they're not a coach. And I, I watch them and I watch them and I wait for the opportunity to kind of connect with them and there's, it just never comes up. And finally, I can't take it anymore and I just have to ask. That would be a cold invite for me. But when I do, I know exactly why I'm asking them. I know exactly why they would be good for it. I know exactly why I think they should do it. Not why I want them on my team. Not why I think they should be in my challenge group. It's all about them. And when I feel that way, and I can honestly express it to them at that point, that's when I know it's okay to cold message them. And I basically lead with that. I tell them, and I learned this from Megan Hansons. She's wonderful. I learned this from her. You share with your fear first. You let them know, hey, you know, I'm really hesitant to send you this because I want you to know that you can say no to me, and I'm fearful that you might think that you can't. But you can. But I have to say this because it's burning inside of me, and if I don't, I'm just going to stare at you stockishly for another five months, right? And then you simply ask, and you say, no pressure. I just had to ask, does this sound like anything that would interest you? How are they going to ignore you? The more you lead with your heart in inviting, the less crickets you're going to get. So as a new coach, we encourage you to reach out to your top ten. It's the same type of thing. How are you going to reach out to your top ten? How do I do that? You do it with heart. You know why they're good for it. Everything about why it is for them. Take yourself out of the equation, and then you lead with the heart, and you tell them, this is why I think this would be great for you. This is what I see in you. This is why I think it would fit for you. And you share all that. You let them know it's okay to say no. A lot of times they don't respond back because they don't want to hurt your feelings. So when you tell them, this is okay, you can tell me no. This isn't about me, it is about you and I say that often, then people aren't afraid to talk it out with you. And more times than not, they end up doing it, which they probably would have ignored you had you not said this is okay if you do say no. So, free groups. Free to paid, you guys asked for this, so I put it in. Free or paid group, invite to a sneak peek group. Basically with those, it's the same thing. You just have to share what you've seen in them. Um, there's a reason that you think it's right for them, once again, you have to share that. And then inviting from a free group to a paid group, um, some of you really wanted to know how to do that too, you just ask. If you guys are overthinking this, then you need some wine. <laughs> like, you just ask them. You just ask. With from your heart. You know, not from your brain. Turn your brain off. Turn your heart on and just ask them. And they're, if they're already in a free group of yours, guess what? They trust you a little bit. So it shouldn't be scary to invite them to the next thing. In-group promotions, these are other ways that I will invite. So I um, make sure that in my groups, I share the opportunity and that I'm having a sneak peek or whatever's going on. And I share it with excitement. 
You guys want to make sure you're not sharing with details. Details don't attract people. Your excitement, your life, how you feel, if you're happy, that's what makes people want to come to the party. Not the details. I don't care if, I would have been here no matter what, whether there was a red carpet, a backdrop, or these beautiful curtains. I, I've been looking at all, looking at that the whole time. I would have been here no matter what because of the person that put it on and because of the passion that she brings to the room. That's why I came today, not because of the details. The details aren't important. And one-on-one -on -one challenger. In the group, if I put that out and everyone, no one really messages, but I really want Mary to say that she wants to come, but she never does. I'm not just going to sit there and hope for her to do it time and time again. I'm going to message her and say, listen, I put this post out there. I'm not sure if you knew that I put it there, um, but I was really hoping that you'd respond on it. And this is why I think you'd be a great part, just to give some information. Don't feel like you have to join, but I was really looking forward to, you know, I really hope that you would um, want to join, and I just had to ask myself. People trust you already, you guys, in your groups. They trust you. This is a prime place to ask for the next thing. Um, I do the same thing with promoting for challenge groups. If you're not sharing what's going on in your challenge group, just because people are in your challenge group doesn't mean they're going to go look at your social media page all the time still. You should be telling them when the next group is and what's going on in your challenge groups, just like you are in your social media. And then when they say, yes, I want to join, you reconsult with them. This is 21 days later. They've had different goals, maybe. They've hit um, a plateau. They need new, something new. They're sick of their program, right? They, you want to reconsult with them. If you don't, you're missing an opportunity to get closer to this person and help them more. You reconsult right back at square one. And then when all you have to do to ask for referrals is they love your group. They're going in another group. You're talking to them about it again. You just simply say, I'm really glad that you're loving this group. Is there anyone that you know that would benefit from joining you? I love when my friends are in there. It makes it more fun. Who do you know that we could ask? No one? Okay. Five people? Great. But you have to ask or it's never going to happen. <sighs> inviting to learn about the discount opportunity and inviting through customer email. Basically, the discount opportunity, you just need to meet them where they're at. Who cares if I see that Christina would be a great coach? If that's not her desire and passion and she wants a discount and that's it, then I need to meet her there because that's her. And if I make it about me and I'm like, geez, I just really wish she'd coach because she'd be great, but she really doesn't want to, well, then I'm making it about me. It's not about her anymore and I'm going to lose her in right. general. Right. You have to, to hold a life where you meet them where they're at. And then just like in your challenge groups, if you're not inviting through customer emails, if you're not telling your current warm market what's going on through customer emails as well, then you're missing the people that already trust you. Your social media is not the only place you invite. You invite within your warm market and who's already there too. Just because they were invited said yes once before doesn't mean they don't need to be invited again and again and again. So it's all about them. It's not about you or success club or your commission. You have to lead with your emotions and be okay with saying, I'm a little hesitant to ask you this because I want you to know you can say no and fearful you might not think you can. But please know this is coming from a good place. When you guys lead with emotion, they see emotion. When you lead with a cold invite and a product, they see a product. So what do you want them to see? The final way, I said this last year when I presented about um, Power Hour too, but I got this, actually, this is from Allison, and then I got this idea from Tabitha. I just take people's ideas, and then I stand up here and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, print one off for every single year, and I put, or every single month, and I put the date or the month at the top. And then every person that I invite, I write their name. If they say yes, I circle. If they say no, I write an N. And I keep them for the entire year. So come December, when the health bet came on, I could look at all the people who weren't it's ready it's from January it's until it's December and reach out to them and say, hey, I know money was your objection before. This is a really great way to earn back. This is what we're doing. And get people on board where if I didn't have that, I wouldn't have known who to invite. And then I also use it because um, you can actually know who to invite in the future for follow-up. So a girl, Destiny, just told me that she has, is having surgery. 
so she can't work out until April, but in April she wants to join my group. Well, I can put that in Team Z, and Team Z can tell me, but I'm a little, I like to have a little more control, too. And so I can flip forward to April and write her name in that first box. When I get to April, I already know I need to reach out to her. So setting your month up for success. This is an example of a calendar. I do it every month for myself. I used to do it for the team. I haven't posted it in a few months. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> got pregnant. But, um, <laughs> but basically, I write when my groups are. My groups always start the first Monday of the month. My clean eating is always the second Monday. My sneak peek is always the third Monday. So the minute one starts, all my posts all of a sudden start breadcrumbing what's coming up the next time, what I'm talking to people about, what I'm inviting to, and what my call to actions will be. So I always have something I'm inviting to. My posts talk about what I'm inviting to, and they stay that way throughout the entire month. So now we gotta talk about guiding through the invite to the close. I might get real quick because I'm running real short on time. Basically, you have to listen. This is really hard because we just wanna tell them why they should do this. But you have to listen. Once you've invited and now you've got their attention, it's time to listen, it's time to ask the right questions, sometimes it's time to ask the hard questions that you think in your head but you don't actually ask, you should ask those, and it's time that you get to know them more. So consultation questions, no matter how it comes into play, I always ask these same questions. And basically, I'm excited, I ask the fewest questions to get the most information from them, which are open-ended questions. So I ask them these six things about their fitness, right, because there's tons of programs and I really need to know a lot about their likes and dislikes. And this one question about nutrition, because whatever they struggle with, pretty sure Shake Allergy can fix that one, from just knowing that one thing, right? So I ask these six questions, or these seven questions, and that is typically what starts that whole middle section of education, which is really what it is. You're gonna see this later. Um, when someone asks what it entails, you answer with excitement. You have to tell them the stories and the success stories and things like that. The facts are telling them things. They don't care what Shakeology has in it. They care whose life it saved and whose life it changed and how it would relate to them. And then you have to point to a third party tool because if you're doing all the talking, chances are, even if Christina did all the talking to a prospect, there'd be some way where she's like, oof, I just overdid that one. I just said way too much. You point to a third party tool and you schedule a follow up. These are a list of my third party tools that are my favorite. It's my discount opportunity video, which breadcrumbs the coaching opportunity. It's my coaching opportunity video. And then the Shakeology happens to be everything else that I use. I do have some things that I've made, but everything else I use the Beach Body video that they created on YouTube. And because it's the shortest, it tells about the program. And then I typically will have one of myself that follows up more in depth and maybe touches on something else more, but it's me in front of them. So the minute that you start doing that, you become a little bit more, they start taking you a little more seriously when it's you as the third party tool and they feel more connected to you. They want to learn from you. Overcoming objections, um, it really just means you need to know more about them. If they don't say no, then it's time to have fun. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. And it's because you just need to understand them more. And they're not saying no. I know everyone says they're saying not right now. But I like to say they're saying, I just can't see how to make it work. Can you help me? How could I make this work? And it's your opportunity to teach them how. So once again, not reading these, but these objections typically go together. I'm gonna to purchase off Amazon to save money. I'm gonna work out at the gym and I'm bad with follow through. Basically, they don't understand the value of what you have to offer. So you have to educate them more. You have to put a 30 par third party tool in. You need to understand where they're coming from and they need to understand the value. You have to take the time to educate them because if you don't explain it, this is, your, this is their chance to learn right now. Do you think they're gonna go to another coach and have them explain it after? No, this is their conversation. When you guys are in this, if you just let it go and you don't take the opportunity to educate them, even if their answer is still no, they have nothing to think about. They have nothing to consider later. And they're not gonna give someone else a chance to explain it because they just gave you that chance. I prefer to eat my food. I already eat healthy and do not need it. 
And can I join with my GMC shake? <laughs> Feel felt found with objections always, and education, once again, is key. They don't understand the value. You have to do your job as an educator. I like to think as myself, I'm educating them. I'm understanding why they feel that way. I felt that way too, but what I found was that even if I eat 3,000 calories of whole foods every single day, I'm still gonna be deficient somewhere, which leads to cravings, sickness, disease. Shakeology feels that for me. I haven't been sick. I've been sick twice in three years, right? If you don't tell them that, they're not gonna hear it from anyone else. They just learned about it through you. You have to give them all the information. Business objections. I'm not outgoing enough. I don't know enough people. It's a pyramid scheme. Seek to understand them, relate to them, let them know that you hear them, um, but let them know what you actually know to be true. Once again, it's your opportunity, and remind them of their strengths. A lot of times they're just scared. They don't think that they have the strengths. They don't know that they have the strengths that they have. You have to see it in them before they see it sometimes, and you have to tell them that you see it. The big ones, money and time, money and time. The thing about money and time, and I just straight up tell people this, is it doesn't matter how much you make, you're gonna live in that budget. And it doesn't matter how much time you have, you're gonna cash out all that time, no matter what you have to do in that day. So all you have to do is tell them there are ways, I used to struggle with that too, there are ways to manage that, and I've, I'm happy to tell you what I've learned and how I manage that. And just ask them, are you willing to, if I share and that could help you, are you willing to listen? Um, and basically, yes, just telling them what you found. You guys are gonna read that later and it gives you more. And then these objections, these are dangerous. The spouse objection, uh-oh. Now you're dealing with a whole different thing. And then the when this, then that. This is when they believe it's not them that's in their way. They believe something else is in their way. And you are now not tied to the thing that's in the way. This is when you have to have patience when you still need to connect to them, you need to be a friend, you need to have be supportive for them, relate to them, and just ask them, keep asking them questions and keep being there for them. If it's really right for them, they're going to come around. But if you disappear on them, they're not. You just have to be there and you have to understand that these are outside of their, these are outside of their control. And you can only control what you can control and so can they. So maybe just with support sometimes, maybe they were just scared to ask their spouse but then they do because you're continually there, because you've built that relationship more, and then they're eventually ready. Overview, we don't need to talk about that. Um, asking for the sale, the final question. When it gets to the part where you're like, well, they said they were gonna purchase, but they're not. Well, first of all, you should be walking them through, and after every single, per every time I say, when you're done, let me know so I can go and make sure it went through okay. That tells them, I need to hurry up and I need to tell her because what if it doesn't go through okay? So I know every time someone's purchased because I make them tell me that they're done. So I can double check it. Um, but on a scale of one to 10, one being not at all, 10 being let's go now, where are you and why? Anything less than a 10, it's an objection. Why? Work through it. And the last thing, the fortune is in the follow-up. If you guys are not following up, then you, hold on a minute, you'll get crickets. You'll get crickets if you follow up and if you don't. Sometimes you just get crickets, but with the more emotion you put into it, the less crickets you get. So you will get crickets because people are busy, especially if you haven't really truly educated them on why it's right for them, then of course they're too busy to listen to more because they don't understand why they even need it yet. That's why it's important for you to lead with the heart. And don't be afraid to follow up because it's not about you. And to be honest, if I'm gonna follow someone and do something with someone, then I would want, I mean, Christina kept asking me to get on the phone. I don't wanna get on the phone, leave me, I don't wanna talk, I just wanna do it. But you know, she let me know, well, I'm here. You wanna get on the phone, what do you wanna do? And I, I felt supported. I felt like she wasn't gonna leave me behind because it's a scary jump. You're gonna get this etiquette on following up First of all, basically, you're circling back. Second of all, after a few days and they haven't said anything, the people with the crickets say, I feel like a stalker. <laughs> you wanted, you know, I'm, I feel kind of weird. You wanted this information. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Let your sense of humor be in there. And there, a lot of times they're gonna laugh and be like, I forgot, I'm sorry. And then if it's been a while and they've seen it like three messages deep, close the conversation. 
Otherwise, it's hanging out there. It's this elephant in the room that's hanging there, and they're like, look, that girl messaged me, and I didn't even answer her. And this is awkward. And you're like, no, guess what? I'm not going to let it be awkward, because I'm going to close it. I'm going to say, you know what? It seems like you're really busy. So I just want you to know, I have groups every month, and you're always welcome. I'd be happy to share the information with you. Usually, when you close the conversation, all of a sudden, they want in. It's, I, it just happened. My husband and I were laughing about it a couple days ago. I'm like, he's been, I was going to say, is there kids? Yeah. He's been messing me around here for like months, and I couldn't get him to commit. And now all of a sudden, I'm like, all right, I'm done. And he's like, well, hey, I want the all-access challenge pack. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so to summarize, be a friend. Share your feelings and let the interaction be led with heart and not with fear. One of my favorite quotes is that every single person feels every emotion. And if you don't, then you're not human. Every single person feels fear. And fear is allowed to get in your car. Fear is allowed to be in there with you. But it's not allowed to drive. That'd be kind of crazy. You'd be all over the road, right? It can be in there and you can acknowledge it. You can kick it a little and... Get it out of your way. It's going to be there. I've, I've talked a lot in front of people, and I was still scared to come up here in the beginning today. Fear can get in my car, but it can't drive it. And you can't let it drive yours either. Tie up the loose ends. Be okay closing conversations. People come around when they're ready, but you have to be there consistently. Consistency is everything, like Megan said. And be the go-to person they remember leading with heart and making it about them. Because even if they say no 10 times when they're ready, because one day they will, you're going to be the person that they want to go to.